in the swing of things on this edition of Baseball Tonight. Can Mark McGuire take a swing closer to the record books? The Tigers have trouble just recording it out. Greg Maddox tries to regain his Cy Young form. Todd Stoudemire approaches a milestone in St. Louis. And the Padres conclude their long road trip south of the border. Keep your eye on the ball and keep your ears open as you catch up with all the moves on Baseball Tonight. Mark. Chris Berman along with Peter Gammons and welcome to baseball tonight or uh, with the uh, Padres and the Mets in Mexico. Basball esta noche. I speak French. I never thought I would say that in Spanish on the show, Peter. Well, it's hot down in Monterey and uh, when the Mariners and Yankees get together, New York, Seattle, whatever, they become very hot. I mean, we remember last year's playoffs. Remember Doc's no hitter earlier this season. And this is a very important and wild four-game series, which was his game three today. Important series for both teams. Uh, bo both teams. The Mariners have to get back on track on this, on this uh, road trip. It's very tough. They don't know whether they're going to have Randy Johnson starting again this year or whether his back's going to keep him in the bullpen. But they also have to have their best players step up. And as we see today, the league's MVP right now, Alex Rodriguez, does. What a wild game. Mariners won the first two. They play again tomorrow. It's game three of the series. Here we go. Ball yard in the Bronx. Mr. November, Jesse Jackson. It's a foul ball and gives it to a youngster. And there's a base hit to right field. So that's First inning, the dock was rocked. Cena Martinez. Got the fastball right no, that, back That's certainly not right. It's two that big Seattle. That must have been Sorrento so or Edgar Martinez. And at any rate, Witten up the middle. Griffey Martinez score 4 nothing. Mariners after one. Mariners not done yet. Alex Rodriguez on second. Junior, down the line, it's gone. Homer number 38, 6-0. Mariners after two, they lead it 8-0. Joe Torre hardly bemused. But the Yankees come back. Tim Purple Reigns, ground rule double. Bernie Williams and Tina Martinez scores 8-3. Next batter. Wow, we got names all over the place here. Here's a ground rule double. Two more, here's a double, two more score. It's eight to five. Bob Wells in for Terry Mulholland. Joe Girardi with a man on for the first time this year. God! First home run is three to 35 at bats. Lou Pinnell looking for something out of the pen. He looks to Randy Johnson. He has owned Cecil Fielder throughout his career, but this time Cecil base hit. Scores Girardi and Jeter. We are tied at 10. Joe Toy wants this. It's hit with something thrown from the crowd. But he was stunned, but stayed in. Then power pitchers first power pitchers. Well, we got this matchup. Randy Johnson and Rivera. You see Randy Johnson throw it by Girardi upstairs. And break, watch the breaking ball. And then Rivera comes in just throwing gas. <laughs> Great fastball on the inside corner to Witten. Mark Witten said, I came over to the American League for this. Five Ks and three innings for Rivera. Johnson a five Ks and two. Bobby, we all live in Ayala Submarine. Wild pitch, bottom 11th. Runners are second and third, one out. But gets Pat Kelly. And with two outs, Girardi. Oh, Joey Carr makes the force. We go to the 12th. Still tied at 10. Griffey at third for Paul Sorrento. And serve it up, Phil Sorrento. Second homer of the game off Jim Messier. This one again in the upper deck, 13-10 Mariners. But the Yankees coming back. Tino Martinez against his ex-mates. Singles to left. Watchy scores at 13-12. But the thriller is ended by Mike Jackson in relief. Who gets Darrell to ground the short. And whew, the Mariners 13, the Yankees 12 in 12 innings. Where do you start on this one? Well, first of all, the Mariners are now 6-2 against the Yankees this year. Each team with 19 hits. Edgar Martinez at four hits. Cora, Alex Rodriguez, Griffey, and Sorrento each had three hits. Jeter, Tino, Reigns each had three hits. Eight guys had three or more hits in this game. As we go inside the box score, you see more of the numbers. The one through four batters for the Mariners. 13 for 25, 11 runs scored. Randy Johnson, the five Ks in two innings. Rivera, we told you about his case. Boxy gets his 2,000th career single. Doc was rocked. You can look at this box score for a long time and come up with something new every time. But all we know is that the Mariners have taken three of the first four from the Yankees. And boy, they couldn't win in the Kingdom. Now they're winning in New York. As for Ken Griffey Jr., against the Yankees, he's a one-man wrecking crew. A three-hit game for him today. 
It's 325 against them in the regular season. We all remember the playoffs last year when he hit the five homers in the five games. Unbelievable. The Mariners have found life. Pale holes in the Brewers. Top of the fifth inning, 5-1 Brewers. And look at Frank Thomas. I mean, he misses it. He missed this pitch from Scott Goodog Carl. But he's so strong, it's gone anyway, and now it's a 5-4 game. 100 RBIs again for Frank Thomas. More on that in a moment. What happens here, Peter? Well, wild pitch. Well, one thing you see, the chase around. Pick up the ball, boy. Go to the <laughs> No, bud. You can't pick up the ball and keep it. But Tony Phillips goes all the way and scores from second base. Scores from second base, always hustling his Phillips. Tied at 7 at the bottom of the 8. Jesse Levis, a blooper. Boom! Norberto Martin and Lyle Mouton collide. Mouton, the bigger guy, injured, though, left the game. After sack with one out, Jeff Cirillo. A little excuse me shot over the draw in an infield. Dave, the incredible host, the pinch runner, comes around to score. And the Brewers win it 8-7. Angel in the morning, Miranda gets the win out of the bullpen. In this game, Frank Thomas became the fourth player in Major League history to get 100 RBIs in his first six seasons. You will not guess the other three. You might guess Joe DiMaggio. You might guess Al Simmons. You would not guess Hal Trotsky. You might guess Leon Trotsky, who was in the game in Mexico, but we'll see that later. Tigers at the try. Well, Ruben Sierra in right field, always an adventure. Sandy Alomar hits it. Ruben. And 4 uh, nothing against Buddy Bell. Then Jeff can a foul ball to right, Ruben Sierra. Buddy Bell. Tigers infield. Pop up by uh, Biscayno and the Harcedeno. Buddy Bell. Bottom of the third, Brian Williams pitching. Jim told me hits this and watch this, Peter. Well, this wakes up Buddy Bell. So fly ball, it goes above the the line, but the question is, did the fan reach over? Jim Evans said it was fan interference, that he was overruled by the home plate umpire, and then so they gave it the home run, and Buddy got pretty upset. So first double, then Homer, no question about this one. Jim Tomey has hit some of the bombs this season, his first career grand slam. So Tomey with the huge day with the six RBIs, OJ, the glove fit, the Indians beat the Tigers by the count of 11-3. Tomey was four for five. Uh, 7 for 11 in the series. The Tribe has won 14 straight at the Jake against Detroit. By the way, the crowd cheered when they showed some highlights of the Packers beating the Baltimore Ravens, the ex-Cleveland Browns in a preseason game. The crowd cheered because the ex-Browns were losers, so uh, don't expect a lot of uh, Ravens fans left over in Cleveland. Well, let's go to the Cleveland Indians where there are a lot of Indians fans in Cleveland. We've now had a chance to digest the trades a little bit, and the team has now had a chance to digest the, uh, the new chemistry in the clubhouse, and more importantly, on the field. How do you think all the trades, all the changes have made with the Indians? I think the Indians are a better team than they were at this time last year. I mean, they're scoring the same amount of runs. How far they go is going to depend on their starting pitching. But the first thing, I mean, listen, you've got Tomey and Ramirez around Albert Bell. I think the power in that order is better. Those two guys are young star hitters who have really come into their own this year. But I also think the biggest thing with this team is that his defense is so much better. It's not only because this guy, you know, is at second base. You look out in that outfield, I mean, I give a lot of credit. This guy, Manny Ramirez, I thought, if there was anyone ever had to be a DH, it was Ramirez. But as you see, he's learned to run better routes. He's worked very hard. He's got a great, a prototype right fielder's arm. And he's really, I mean, I think among top five improved players in the American League, he's one of them. He's become a very good right fielder. There's no question that's the best outfield in, in baseball right now, offensively, of course. But I think a big thing in this team, Eddie Murray is a very important person to any team. Bayerga was very important, but it's different. The, the year is different. Times have changed. And I think as we've seen with this team, Kenny Lofton has risen in the absence of those two players whom he respects so much, he's really risen to be a leader. He's the guy that when all the stuff with Albert Bell was, was going on, said, hey, we're going to rise above this, we're going to pull together, this is not this kind of team. I think you're going to see. I really believe this is a better team than it was. If they just get starting pitching, which is going to be helped by that defense in the playoffs, then they they may go right back into the World Series. But you really like Tommy Bell, Ramirez, 3-4-5, and that... And that uh... And that could be around for a long time with or Albert. We shall see. But it's around this year, and it's, it's, it's tough. Todd Stoudemire took to the hill in St. Louis to uh, try to keep the Redbirds in first and to propel he and his dad, Mel, into a first-place tie on the all-time father-son win list with number 258 if they could win. The record currently held by father Paul Dizzy and son Steve Rainbow Trout. It's only fitting that to catch the Trouts, Stoudemire would have to beat the Marlins. Could he hook him? Well, get everything going. 
Conine, shot to the right side. Gary Gaetti is there. Strikes out Gary Sheffield. A no-hitter through six for Todd Aristotelmeyer. But the hopper by Devon White to lead off the seventh breaks up a chance at history, at least that part of history. Bottom of the seventh, one under St. Louis. John Mabry off the glove of Al Leiter. Al! I said a Bud Leiter! Throws it way wide. Pagnasi scores. Four runs off lighter this inning. Top of the ninth, 5 2 St. Louis. But Dennis Eckersley has loaded the bases. With one out, Sheffield, who's already gone deep, is at the plate. It's just a 5 2 game. With one swing of his back, Marlins could go ahead. But the X, he does so well, certainly in his salad days. Clayton starts the 6 4 3 DP. Sheffield doubled up. Eckersley saved number 21. And the card. For the look at what's coming up on 60 Minutes Wednesday. Get ready for Dave Chappelle, one of the funniest guys on TV. His story this Wednesday. If you wanted to create the ideal health drink, you'd want the vitamin C you find in rutabagas, anthiamins, liver, minerals like potassium and magnesium. Or you could just have a glass of Florida orange juice. Florida orange juice, drink it every day. To confirm your order with Wholesale Beauty Supply, please press 1 now. Oop. To order red polish, press no, 1. Meant, beep. For, for candy apple red polish, please no. press 2. Beep. No. For ruby red polish, press 2. No, beep. For fire truck red polish, no, boop. Boop. Beep. Boop. 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 Boop